you referred to to this in in the book about purpose and and uh, i was I was sort of reading where you, you, you referred to sort of having a lot of interest, but struggling to find your purpose. Um, and I guess it's something that is very important to have that unreasonable success. Have you found that there's been some lessons from your perspective in, in trying to kind of find out what that thing is that we're all probably not aware of that we should put more of our effort into? I think it's, I don't think you can actually sit down with a piece of paper or indeed certainly not on a computer screen and say, well, what is it that I should do? Well, you can't even go for a long walk and decide that sort of thing. I think it has to hit you, it has to hit you over the head uh, suddenly. And uh, in order for it to hit you over the head, you have to be listening. And, you know, the greatest step forward in my career was probably when I found out that two of my colleagues in uh, Bain and Company, who were also junior vice presidents of the company, had decided to go off to Boston to talk to Bill Bain. And I didn't know why they'd gone and what, what was happening. But it suddenly occurred to me that perhaps they had decided to resign. I don't know how I thought that. <laughs> but it was because their phones were off, I think. And, you know, you never, you never left your phone off and you never refused to return calls because it might be an important client so um so i thought it was very mysterious and i actually cycled round to i slept on it and then i cycled round to the home of one of the two people and he was a guy called ian evans and he lived in hugh near the river thames very nice house and i banged on the door and i i got no answer at all and i shouted through the letterbox Zoe, that was his wife's name, and Ian, and I got no response at all. And then just as I was about to go, Zoe came to the door and said, you better come in. And they told me that they had been to Boston, that they had resigned, that Bill Bain had taken it very badly, that he threatened a lawsuit against them, and they were sort of, you know, absolutely stunned. Um, and I said to them, well, it's funny that you want to set up your own strategy consulting business, because that's exactly what I want to do. And how about I join forces with you? And they were at such a low ebb that they thought, well, maybe this is not such a bad idea. Uh, and for various reasons, uh, they, the lawyers said, no, go away. We've got a difficult job dealing with Bill Bain with two of us, and we don't want three. But very soon afterwards, we did join forces, and we started. Now. I had a deep desire to own a consulting group. I had a deep desire to actually start a um, strategy consulting firm, but I didn't know how to do it. And then suddenly it happened, you know, that I was, I was sort of listening, if you like, to the slightest clue as to what it was that uh, I should do. And I think if you've got a very, very strong desire to do something and you keep that in the back of your mind, then you can be aware of a possibility of a transformation which you wouldn't otherwise uh, come to. And in my book, Unreasonable Success and How to Achieve It, I discuss how that happened to 20 out of the 20 people in the book, in one way or another, that, that they suddenly realized that they had a transforming experience and they were they were not the people that they were before, or they suddenly realized what it was that they wanted to do and that they could do, that they, they, they saw a path forward. So I think it's really just being open to the clues that, that they're out there. I mean, we, you know, it's all about selective attention. You know, I once asked um, one, of my, uh, one of my nephews, how he managed to hear when he was when his children were very young when they were in trouble or whatever and he said it's all selective attention <laughs> so most of the time you block out everything that you know a two-year-old or a three-year-old is saying because good heavens you don't want to listen to that but but suddenly if they're in danger or if there's something that's really really important you you hear it and i think it's that kind of selective attention that you that you need in order to be aware of the few times in life when your whole life can turn on a very small coin, on a sixpence, as we'd say in England, in the days we had sixpences. Uh, so it's, 
it's that it's that combination of extreme desire and openness because you'll never work out what to do by having you know a pen and paper and sort of making a list and say well what are the things i'm exceptionally good at doing and all those conventional things it won't it won't uh, it won't happen that way do you think it that's won't. something to do with your like you in the book you've met reference how you get your unconscious mind to work for you and sometimes whether you go out for a walk or a workout you set yourself a puzzle and then sometimes this comes to you do, do you think some of it is is that being conscious and saying okay you know here's here's what i need to solve and 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 allowing that time for it to happen do you think yes i think the unconscious mind i mean the neuroscientists say that that 95 percent. i don't know how they can possibly calculate this uh, but 95 percent of uh the mind is actually unconscious rather than conscious and you know it you know i mean if, if you're out for a walk and you know the route well you're not paying attention to the route and actually, if you're driving, most of the time you're unconscious as well is driving rather than you're driving, which is sort of quite a sobering thought, really. But ne nevertheless, if, you, if you're if you open to the unconscious mind, I mean, one of the things that, that has been proven is if you have a difficult problem, the last thing that you should do is try and solve it late at night, particularly if you're reading your emails <laughs> and going through it. And you know, oh, God, I've got to reply to this email today. I have, I've left it for three days or whatever. Uh, but it's a difficult problem. Don't, you know, switch the machine off, listen to some music, read something, have a shower, do anything. But just before you go to sleep, think, you know, think a little bit about this issue and then just switch off or just go to sleep anyway. And then you might wake up at three o'clock in the morning and suddenly find you've got the answer. Or you might wake up, hopefully, at seven o'clock in the morning and find you've got the answer. It's very inconvenient to have it at three or four o'clock in the morning. But, you know, it will get sorted because the unconscious mind is busy, 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 rearranging the patterns of your life and trying to find an answer for you. And if you sleep on it, it's a good old piece of folk wisdom before they even knew what the unconscious mind was, <laughs> uh, then you're likely to, to do that. So use your unconscious mind, yes, definitely. And, with, uh, with and use your intuition. Uh, yeah.